Cryptozoology is a subscience. It's a subculture. It's silly goose stuff, right? What if I told you there was five cryptids that actually exist? Thanks for watching. I'm Adam. This is Informal History. This is Tilly the Frilly. The reason that we have Tilly today is because this is a frilled dragon and we're talking about dragons, sort of. So get comfortable, Frilly. It turns out I thought cryptozoology was plain silly goose stuff. There's no way that there are cryptids out there that are actually real or that were ever thought to be not real, but then found to be. And it turns out that there's more than five. So there could be a part two, but let's start out with number five the Kraken. Now the Kraken was a mythological beast, mostly in Norse mythology and folklore, basically a giant cephalopod, a squid or an octopus with big, strong, gigantic tentacles that was able to capsize an entire ship. Yeah, okay, well, that isn't really a thing. Sort of, because there is a giant cephalopod that is big enough that in these depictions of what Kraken was, could have existed, however, did giant squid, which do exist, did they ever try to take down ships? Probably not. Were they ever dredged up in nets? Probably not. But the remnants of these giant squids, which are over 40 feet a lot of the time, which are so deep in the ocean, they don't even see light for most of their life, but well, they have washed up on shore. The beaks of them, which is the only hard part that doesn't decompose. And in the bodies of sperm whales. Sperm whales are known to eat giant cephalopods, such as these giant squid. Cephalopods, basically a family of animals, or I'll put it right here. This is informal history, not get into uh, animal stuff. If you like animal stuff, my other channel's right here. It's all about that. Now, how is it possible that something we all know exists today was once not known about to the point where we thought it was a beast that was taking down ships? Well, very simply, we didn't know anything about the deep ocean for a very long time. We didn't have submersibles until very recent times and nets that are used for fishing that sometimes get these animals up to the surface. It's rare because these animals usually aren't in that shallow of water. So if you were bringing them up all the time, okay, this makes sense. But in a lot of cases, if you're a fisherman, there's gonna be one time in your entire life where you bring up an angler fish, or in this case, one of these giant squids. So it's almost impossible to recreate. It's one of those things where, well, tales of people who've seen mermaids and countless tales of people who have seen these giant cephalopods. So couldn't they be just as real as each other? Well, without modern science, of course you'd think that. And although we've seen dead specimens over and over and over through the course of history, the first time we ever saw an actual living giant squid was in 2012. We're talking about a dozen years ago, a submersible went down very deep in the ocean. It had a bunch of lights that were acting as lures because these animals like to eat jellyfish, which do glow quite a bit. And they saw the very first ever recorded living, swimming giant squid. So although all of us know now and have seen the footage or are seeing the footage now, I've seen this giant 43 foot creature, which is the biggest one that was ever caught in 2007. So the Kraken, not real, but the reason that the Kraken ever existed in the minds of folklore is very real. Number four, one of the cutest ones on the list, the duckbill platypus. I remember learning about the duckbill platypus when I was about eight years old. Europeans thought this was a hoax. There were explorers that went to go visit Australia, which is where you find the duckbill platypus, and they would send back tales of this beaver-like creature with a beaver tail and a beaver body, but it has a duck bill and it can envenomate you from its back webbed feet. Oh, and they lay eggs, by the way. Mammals that lay eggs, like, come on, give me a freaking break. There's no way except for all of those things are real. And the reason that you think a egg laying mammal is so ridiculous everywhere else in the world is because they're called monotremes. There's two of them alive in the world, the echidna and the platypus, and they are both in Australia. So if you're not familiar with Australia, which until very recent times, Europeans weren't, you would think this is ridiculous. We know mammals don't lay eggs. The first accounts of platypus by European explorers were in the late 18th century. 
And this sparked disbelief and skepticism. The idea of an animal with a beak, fur like a mammal, and the ability to lay eggs, obviously this seems just bizarre, a hoax, or a mythical creature. But specimens were finally being sent back in Europe, and they were met with suspicion. And it wasn't until a detailed scientific examination confirmed the existence of the remarkable creature. It wasn't until 1799 it was formally described by science. And even then, when explorers would go to Australia or see the specimens that were sent back to Europe, even after it was formally described in 1799, a lot of people would think this thing couldn't be real. This is definitely a hoax. Something really interesting to note that most people don't talk about is they have barbs on the back of their hind legs and they are able to envenomate humans. This is a terrible venom. It won't kill you, but it is in excruciating pain and it can last for weeks in humans. They use morphine in order to dull the pain. That's how severe it is. These are cute, they're not so cuddly, they're amazing, and I can't believe we didn't know about them for so long. Number three, the frilled shark. Returning for the last time in this episode to the depths of the ocean where there is no light, the frilled shark looks like something of a nightmare. This is one of the most prehistoric animals that is still living today. So it looks almost like it can't be real because all the things that lived for most of its life are now extinct. It's also known as the lizard shark. And let's talk about the anatomy. It's very long, slender. Its face doesn't look like a shark. It looks like a monster that you'd be drawn by a cartoonist. It has 21 to 29 rows of recurved teeth that are set in clusters, very different than most sharks that we know today. Not only that, but you don't really see them. Encounters with humans are few and far between, so when somebody says they dredged one of these things up or they found one on shore, well, of course you think that they're kind of full of it because nothing else looks like this. We know what sharks look like. Sharks have been studied. This isn't a shark. There's no way this animal exists. Not to mention the very narrow slits for gills. This thing looks like it couldn't be real. In fact, they call it the lizard shark because it looks more like a lizard or an eel than an actual shark. The reason too that it was always thought to be a cryptid, no way that it exists, because when they were described, there was no concrete evidence. So you describe something like we talked about before where it seems unreal, but then you have nothing to prove it also. The body of a shark fast enough to be studied by science back in the day, this wasn't something that could be could happen. So if you found one, again, you'd find one your entire life. This isn't something that would come up all the time by accident. However, they weren't even seen in their true habitat swimming and breathing until 2004. And this was at a depth of over 870 meters. Number two, Okapi. Now the Okapi, that sounds like a Pokemon name, but it looks like a giraffe and a deer made a baby. How cute are these guys? Just don't go up to one. Not that you could get close in the first place, but they're rather aggressive. They can be very territorial. And these, are unlike other animals that look like them, deer and things like that, do not herd at all. They come together to breed. They are solitary animals and often called forest giraffes. They're the only living relative of the giraffe that all of us know to exist. The difference is the giraffe is a plains animal that's seen from a mile away. They're so big and they're not really gonna run away from you. The okapi is going to run away from you. So although the indigenous in Africa, where they're from, have known about them forever because sometimes they would fall into traps, that's how they found them, generally the sightings were very few and far between. So when European settlers show up and they're told about Okapi, oh, so you're telling me that there's a short little giraffe that's only about six feet tall and 500 pounds and we haven't seen one and we've been here for weeks? There's no way that could be the case. There's giraffes over there, over there, everywhere. How could this thing possibly exist? Not to mention, it kind of looks like a horse with zebra legs, but a giraffe type head. It just, it looks ridiculous in your mind when it's described to you. And of course, there's no photographs back in the 18, 1900s when these were being described to Westerners. So of course the Westerners, when they went home, told of this tale of this animal that couldn't possibly really exist. But finally, after Western science was able to get some of these to be sent back to Europe and formally described, that's exactly what happened. British explorer Sir Harry Johnson obtained pieces of its skin and its skull from local hunters and recognized it as a distinct species. We used to have tons and tons of animals in the giraffe family, but none of them except for the Okapi still live today. They're all extinct. So if you're looking for a giraffe that you don't have to look up at, well, Okapis are really cool. And if you wanna see one, you're gonna to have to look at videos like this one, the Discovery Channel, or maybe find one in a zoo, because if you see one in the wild, very acute hearing, and they'll run away before you even know they were there in the first place. And number one, 
Godzilla. Yes, Godzilla is real. Not the 80 foot giant lizard from Japan folklore where they're trampling buildings and breathing fire. Actually, I got to admit, I've never seen any Godzilla films. But the inspiration was from a Komodo dragon. And those are very real. Although for many, many years, those who have heard stories from Indonesia about these 10 foot long animals that will bite their prey, nothing like this anywhere around you. And a Dutch explorer comes back from his travels and says, yeah, there's this remote island. There's basically nobody there except for one tribe that has not been contacted by anyone who looks like me. They don't speak the language. There's very, not really tons there, but there are these giant dragons there. Like, of course you'd think that it's silly goose stuff. However, it turned out that in 1910, they were finally described by Western science and now all of us know them to be real. Now you probably haven't seen one because there's only a few zoos in the world that can successfully reproduce them and keep them even alive. They're very difficult. They're a very unique monitor, but that doesn't make them any less interesting. Would you like to see part two? Let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have a video idea for the channel, I'd love for you to tell me all about it. If you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, really trying to grow this channel. And because we do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.